Thank you for listening to the Tatnus Podcast on the Tatnus Co. Network. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome ladies and gentlemen, a Mercedes kind of sentiment, luxury and trust in me to honor the free we all should be in. See my sun down burst into yin and yang, green that's me. What's up you guys? Welcome to Tatnus Podcast. My guest today is an awesome, awesome guest. Proud to call her a friend of mine. Angela Joseph. You may have seen her in The Last Stand with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Johnny Knoxville. She was also in Breaking Bad. Uh, She's done a lot of movies, Clown Motel. Uh, We had a great time, great conversation. Check it out, man. All right. So it's awesome to have you on, especially. Um, Thank you so much. (laughs) I'm a little bit envious, not going to bullshit. You got to work with Schwarzenegger. And that oh was, yeah, that was, he's so nice. That he's so nice. Cool. I love that dude. So yeah, oh, me too. Sweet dude. Um, really would have been cool to work with him. So, and, and then you were on Breaking Bad, which I loved. I binge watched that whole damn show because I was late to the party on that. Oh wow! Truthfully, I had no interest whatsoever in watching it. And an, uh-huh. an ex of mine when I was with her at the time was like, you would probably really like it. Yeah. And um, I was like, I just don't have an interest, man. I'm not a big TV guy. Right. So, so she's like, when we had nothing going on one day, she's like, let's just watch it and see what you think. So we made it through about two shows. And then she's kind of looking at me to see like what I think. And I looked at her like, the fuck are you doing? Put another one on, damn it. Like, <laughs> I was time to binge. It's time to binge. Yeah, Breaking Bad is awesome. It was a great experience. I got to work with Anna Gunn and Dirk Norris um, in a scene where uh, Anna, uh, but Dirk has figured out that Walt, what Walt's doing. And um, Anna, uh, conf- he confront- they, there's a confrontation. Well, Anna turns to leave the restaurant and bumps into my table. Like repeatedly, it was just over and over. And one, and the last time she did it, she just, you know, because the, they're like, all right, cut. And she just falls right on the table. And we were laughing so hard. I love it. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun to work on those shows. And even if it is just background, you get to learn so much. Right, and now right. with my career, uh, these background things have turned into cameos. So it's. That's amazing. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I got to a point um where i binged on it so hard i made it through like a couple seasons and i was caught up so then i was with everybody else having to wait you know a week oh yeah and then when it ended i was like what am i going to do with my life now better call Saul. right i had nothing to look forward to better call Saul. (laughs) i'm sorry but yeah uh a lot of my uh my friends and uh, talent are in all of that stuff, uh, you know, Jerry Giangelo has a, has a reoccurring role in uh, Better Call Saul. So that one's, you should get that one next. Right. I mean, uh, people were saying, well, you know, Breaking Bad's on Netflix now. You can watch it again. And I'm like, no, I am not going to put myself through that heartache because it's going and to And then El again. Camino, there's a movie. I can't wait. That's going to be. You got, you got to see it. It's already out. Right. Uh, I can't wait. I got to get time. Uh, I'm so damn busy all the time now that uh, I know you got to take time for viewing the good stuff though yeah I've refused to watch Breaking Bad on Netflix again because I'm like no I'm not going through that heartbreak again because it's going to end again no exactly Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) I know it is heartbreaking isn't it right it's like it's so damn good uh, and then I just found out the other day like going you know when you go back and you watch stuff from way back Mm-hmm. and you're like holy shit this dude was in this and the 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 dude in the wheelchair in breaking bad was the landlord in ace ventura nice and yeah I, it is it is fun to figure all of that out and connect the dots yeah and i was like that's cool um i i, I saw it on netflix i saw like the, the trailer or like not uh-huh. trailer, but just that little preview that they give and I was like, holy shit, that dude's the, the dude with the bell and shit from Breaking Bad. I was like, it's the landlord from Ace Ventura. Holy oh, that's God. awesome. And in Breaking Bad, he was so wicked. <laughs> he was awesome. I love that guy because like, <laughs> yeah, because, you know, he did his job so well. Because I remember. Yes, he did. 
I remember watching it like he's gonna fuck everything up. Fuck that guy. <laughs> you know, I was like so pissed. I was like, he's a rat. He's gonna like snitch with his stupid little bell. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. And it's got you rooting for Walter White and Jesse Pinkman. Right. It was so good. I mean, that it shit. really was. It really, really was. I mean, there's so much truth behind it, though. I mean, the healthcare system. What are you gonna do if you get cancer? Well, I gotta go sell. I gotta go uh, make a really good recipe. And go sell some uh, blue meth. <laughs> or, or move out here to Canada, whatever. I mean. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. You guys are blessed with that. So that is that is wonderful. <laughs> right. Uh, cheers. Cheers to Lorene Landon and in the in the wonderful food dog. Yeah. She, she was born in the same area that I was. So. That's yes, cool. it's a blessing. Some good people come from up there. I know Sherry Dave. Sherry. Uh, um, Sherry Nelson. Nelson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Sherry Nelson sure. as well. I absolutely love Sherry. She's a very good so friend. So sweet. Of mine. She's amazing. Yeah, very, very good friend of mine. Super sweet. Um, so that's really when nice. they sent Ron the part to his baby, his little his little car. I was just warmed. My heart melted. <laughs> yeah, she does a lot of really cool stuff for people, man, and I love that because you know I'm I'm like that in the sense where I think Sherry and I are both the same. No matter how long we've been successful and doing shit, we're always grateful because we both realize like it's not owed to us. You know, we exactly. work exactly, exactly. You work your ass off, sure, but you know, it, it's it's not guaranteed. It's not promised, and it's not owed to you. So you know, we're both grateful for every single thing that happens, even if it seems like it's this. You know. Um, I've got like eight frames to put on my wall of publications where I was interviewed, shit like that. And it's because I'm grateful. It's not an ego, but um, it, it's literally the fact that somebody took a part of their career and said, you're worth, you know, talking about. And I'm grateful for that. No matter how much I've accomplished, I don't give a shit. It, it never gets old. It never, you know, five years of it. And I'm still exactly it's as grateful as i always was so and isn't it a good feeling when you lift up other people and inspire other people and help like you, i know you're you're very charity driven as well uh, my organization is autism you know my, my grandson bruce lee has uh, autism and you know i i just i missed the walks uh because of the pandemic we didn't get to go on our walk this year and that was kind of heartbreaking and we always get new team shirts for bruce and you know, so I did miss that this year and we gave some money anyhow, but it still would have been nice because the kids have such a great time. Everybody out for the walk. You know, I'm out in Denver, so we always have a really nice autism walk. Right. And I'm starting, you know, a charity myself because of my son's condition that took his life. Um, I'm sorry uh, to hear that. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's 2018. Um, but I mean, they gave him two weeks to live because of the condition. That's the history. Oh, wow. But he lived to be two years old. So he yeah. fought his ass off. So, you know, I'm doing a charity thing, but then I started to like shift my focus a little bit to, you know, making more work for myself, of course, but to make it like a nonprofit organization with charity mm -hmm. status. Mm -hmm. So that way I can put funds into research for the condition that he had NKH but also put funds towards other things that help children so I can cover as much ground as possible because I don't have the most faith in some charities. Like you, you can never be sure. Yeah, that's true. That that's true. Going to research, right. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not the charity's fault. Usually it's like, once you relinquish the money, you don't know what's happening with it. And if it's, right. if it's not all going to research, especially with this condition being so rare, say the government or somebody decides well it's so rare it's not that important let's put it towards something else um or let's take a chunk of it for ourselves and give the research lab you know a piece of it uh, yeah if you're gonna donate why don't you just donate the whole thing right so yeah. if they're gonna do things like that behind my back and i don't know because i you know do a, any of us really know where the donations truly go um once the charities relinquish it we don't know that the labs. Yeah, it's really sad. Some of the newer and smaller, you know, more independent type charities, you can actually see. Doodle. Sorry about that. No it's worries. A, it's a little, my little Mexican chihuahua, and he likes to make himself known. 
and and the SD is picking on him. That's why I stopped looking at him. <laughs> that's all that's going on over here. She's just staring at him, and he's not happy about that. Yeah, so I figured, you know, if if I was to make it um, a nonprofit organization, it allows me to cover more ground with like giving research money but also giving money for kids that can't afford back to school uh, supplies or kids that are less fortunate um, in terms of, you know, anything, food banks, uh, oh, gorgeous dog. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, this would be the only way to get her to leave dude alone. It's just to <laughs> let her sit right here. <laughs> and this now is my, Gemma. Now my cat's starting, so I mean. Okay, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a pet thing. Right. This is Gemma. She's the first dog named after a clown in Clown Motel. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's a gorgeous dog. Thank you. American Eskimo. Beautiful. So how was working on that movie? Because that's Oh my goodness, it's so much fun. I mean, it's been an adventure. Cloud Motel has been an adventure because you know it's really a, a, a real location. So it's not like we set up and stuff. Exactly. We're, we go down to the motel in uh, Tonopah, Nevada, and uh, this is our third movie, my second. I was in the first one and the um, just the, the sequel right now that we're still filming. And um, the uh, writer, Joseph Kelly, he did a short down there as well. They were, uh, him and his uh, editor, Dave Bailey, were on a, on a road trip, I think Shriek Fest or Shock Fest or something like that, one of those conventions a few years back and they passed by that motel and they were like, oh my God, that's a horror movie waiting to happen. That's and they right. made it happen. And um, actually the success of the motel is phenomenal since the movie. No it doubt. Since, it's really, really crazy. And they're doing a lot of really, really cool things. They've been really, really nice hosts for, you know, um, for our filming as well as other people uh, that film in the desert out there. Cause there's, you know, a number of locations uh, near uh, Tonopod that have, you know, caves and deserts and, um, you know, aren't regulated by your Hollywood uh, studios. Right. So, you know, we've been, we've been working, working hard to make things happen during a pandemic when a lot of the big studios are, they're kind of taking a break because there's really not much they can do. Um, you know, we get ready to film The Bleeding Dark. Uh, this one uh, starts filming um, next week. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And that one's up in, uh, up in uh, Oregon, so. That's so cool. Um, I'm stoked at the fact that now people want me to uh, get into that industry and uh, be a horror killer. I like, dude, say when. <laughs> That'd be oh, yeah, say when. There's so much going on right now. Keith, you're going to have to definitely keep uh, keep following, um, you know, because I'll have some more casting and some new moves coming up. But right now, currently, um, we are... Uh, funded and filming the bleeding dark uh, starting next week. We just had a, it ended up being a, a you know a, a real blessing. We just had a, a a cast change, and our new lead for the bleeding dark is none other than Courtney Gaines from Children of the Corn and Back to the Future. Awesome. I know. I I I've been on a Courtney Gaines kick for the past week now uh watching uh, and the burbs re-watching all his movies and it's just so much fun that is cool i mean that's um definitely you know i saw that and uh, and courtney and eileen come on that's the that's pazuzu and malachi right the demon from the exorcist and malachi from children of the corn that is so cool i mean it's a dream team for me i'm so excited that's gonna be super cool um yeah, I was pretty jazzed when I saw that. I was like, oh, that's going to be awesome for you. I know, it's sick. It was like the best best news all year for me. Yeah, yeah every movie I work with with Eileen uh, is one of the best, you know, best times of the year. But Eileen and I have been um, very close for a couple of years now since the Clown Motel autograph signing at Dark Delicacies two years ago. That's awesome. That's when we met. And uh, she's just an am amazing soul, and I absolutely love her to death. And, uh, you know, through, I met, you know, Jimmy and Ron through Crepitus. I was publicity on Crepitus. And when we finally met at a red carpet, it's just been history. They are the most amazing people in the whole world. And always, always lifting people up and always helping and always so fun and funny and 
genuine and just good people. Yeah, anybody that makes me laugh that damn much is always. Good. I know, laughing all the time, every day. I love our life. Yeah, they, they got the same sense of humor as I do. So immediately we just meshed. I mean, Ron and I, I, I wish people could hear what was off air before we started on my show because it was hilarious. <laughs> um, the ball busting started immediately. Uh, the oh, story, yeah, he's the, really uh, fun. Yeah, the stories and everything. It was just like, I was like, this is my kind of person immediately. Uh, so to get high praise from him after the fact, I was like, man, that's cool. You know, that is awesome. That is awesome. Are you comfortable, Gemma? Because I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Are you comfortable now? And the thing I love about Ron is that he doesn't blow smoke up anybody's ass. Um, so to be told by a bunch of people after the fact, oh, Ron just adores you, man. He, he thought the world of you. Um, he had so much fun doing your show. And you mm -hmm. know, I was like, damn, you know, that's crazy. And, you know, I, one night I, I shot Eileen a message and I just said, hey, you know, thanks for, uh, you know, putting in so much work and everything. Um, and she's like, no, man. She's like, thank you. Because from what I'm hearing from every guest you've had thus far, including Ron, you're like the one of the best interviewers on the planet. So thank you for working. Uh -huh. And I was like, damn, that's crazy. Uh, that is great. You, you're doing a great job. I mean, I enjoyed watching your shows, so I knew it was going to be fun. Oh, thanks. Yeah, you know, I, like I want that. I always tell people, like my my priority is that the guests um, are respected and comfortable and enjoy their time because I value everybody's time because you can't give that back. So I don't want to waste people's time if uh, if they clearly are not you know, into it or whatever. I'm not even going to, you know, bother wasting their time. Yeah. You know, um, but I'm not going to bore them with the same old, you know, boring questions. And uh, Not at all. I've enjoyed every one of your shows and you've had some of my best friends on the show. You know, Lorraine Landon, Joe Castro, Jimmy and Ron. Just amazing. Yeah, I mean, I got a lot of friends in the industry. I got CJ Graham coming on in uh, oh, nice. on the 16th, a friend of mine. And, um, you know, and uh, he's a really cool guy. I've had Mick Strong on, who was the production designer for Nightmare on Elm Street 3 and 4. And, and uh, he did the effects for Boogie Nights, which I just watched again the other day. Uh, oh, don't you love watching stuff that your friends made? Isn't right. that... It's just such a feeling of pride. You're so proud of your friends, you know? Yeah, man. And, you know, he uh, told me a hilarious story about the prosthetic that they used. And he's like, man, I was intimidated. He's like, I'm hung like a hamster. And they bust out this 12-inch fucking dildo. <laughs> Slap it right on the desk, you know? And he's just like, man, I had a complex. <laughs> he said this. Oh, my on, God. Literally said this on my show. I'm like, you just outed yourself on my show, bro. <laughs> oh that's horrible oh my god you had that sense of humor I, you know yeah but no no shame i guess i guess when kevin smith had his heart attack you remember he he told all of the stories <laughs> about being terrified to be in his underwear naked to the doctors and yep. they had him all on anesthesia you know on, on on sleepy meds and it was on i think that's really funny and he told the world so yeah, he's a great guy, man. He he doesn't mind. Uh, <laughs> he's got a sense of humor about himself, which I love. You have to. Yeah, you have to. Exactly, you have to. The second you start taking yourself way too seriously, nobody wants to deal with you. Yeah, I know. It's, it's boring. It's boring. Just be real. Be nice. Be genuine. Lift people up. Help people. Be positive. Don't. Right. We don't need any new crap in Hollywood and entertainment. We're trying to clean up all that crap that we've had to deal with for decades so let's leave the crappy people to the past right i mean ron talked about his experience where he said he worked with somebody recently that had that mentality of like don't you know who i am and blah 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 and he's like Do they suck those type of people suck yeah he honestly they suck i don't like working with those type of people and i think it shows in the casting crew that i do work with they're absolutely genuine souls and they're amazing people yeah you know yeah. He, he said there's not too many he can say that about, but there's the odd one. And he said, I mm -hmm. steer clear of them, you know. Yeah, exactly. That's what you do. You stay clear. 
because and people learn by example they see what you're doing or whatever but you know and i and also heard you guys you were talking with uh with jimmy about all the sudden you know all of a sudden you want you want to, if you want people to talk to you just say you got a movie casting or something like that it's fun. big announcement i'm getting ready to cast a movie or a big announcement coming and then all these people come out of the woodworks so you're like oh you didn't support me for shit so right bye or, or you know like you get published in like seven bajillion fucking articles and things like that nobody gives a shit it's too hard right. to, too hard to click a button to show that they're supporting you yeah it's a like or a love it's really easy it's not but when they need that money, tough right but when they need money who the hell's the first person they come to with oh i don't know how i'm going to pay for this and how i'm going to pay for that Mm hmm. Yeah, that's not that's not OK. I've been and we're hardworking, independent filmmakers and we are, you know, utilizing the Jobs Act and our crowdfunding because this wasn't available to us before. It's only been available since 2016 and I am a very big part of Legion M. Um, I've been invested in them since second round and participating in everything that we've got going. The next one I need to see right now is um, save us, save yourselves. Which we uh, which we bought at Sundance. I'm a, I'm a Legion and Scout uh, third year running, and we get to Scout Sundance. We've got a really 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 super cool app that all of Legion uses uh, to scout the films that they're that they need to see while the crew is in at Sundance. That's cool. So, yeah, last year we bought Alien, um, the Origins of Alien, the uh, documentary on Alien, and this year we bought Save Yourselves which looks so fun i can't wait to see it and that's available on your um your screening to your streaming devices and you can also go to legionm.com and go in the shop and, and buy stuff there that is cool um i love things like that when people just keep kind of building on what they're mm -hmm. you yeah have to. you have to i mean you uh, really do otherwise nobody's going to do it for you you got to make it happen that's right i always tell people man <laughs> you know if you reach the top of a mountain find a bigger fucking mountain and start climbing again Exactly. You just start over back to one. Yeah, because if you don't enjoy your 15 minutes, because that's all you're going to have. That's all you're going to get. That's all you're going to get. <laughs> the hardest, yeah. part, you know, once you, you become successful, the hardest part is staying there. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's really true. Really begins. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, people want something new. Mm -hmm. So getting there is the easy part in comparison to staying there. Um, you always got to kind of reinvent yourself and do new things and, you know, try new things and uh, not be afraid to, to fail once in a while. It's going to happen, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, it, it's crazy because there's so many things that I never considered and then doing this and doing a bunch of other shit. I had a lot of pros around me that were like, damn, like everything you touch, you just slay that shit. Have you ever considered acting? Because you can't get punched in the face forever, you know? It, yeah, it, no kidding. Unless you want a brain like eggnog, then I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they're like, have you ever considered acting? I was like, you know, I never thought of it, but you know, uh, I'm I'm open to anything. Um, and then to be pitched the idea of you're 6'5", 265 of muscle. Why the fuck are you not a horror killer? I know, not just that, but there's so many of you guys that are acting. You know, Chuck Liddell is in um, um, Nation's Fire, and I got to run the red carpet for Thomas Churchill for Nation's Fire, and, you know, he's an awesome soul. Lorene introduced me to him. He's really nice, him and his wife, Heidi. Yeah, he's a great uh, Um So, yeah, I, you know, and then I was like, well, shit. You said the magic word when you said horror. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> yeah, so, I think I'm glad you're a horror horror lover too. It's one of the you know, best genres out there. Yeah, I mean, shit, high praise coming from Jimmy too to say, why the fuck, <laughs> why are you not the next Jason or Myers? I'm like, dude, if somebody came to me before they finish their sentence, I'd be like, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. I have friends that were in that, um, that were involved producing and writing that uh, uh, Friday the 13th Vengeance that Jason Brooks did the Jason for. And there was a scene that uh, one of my friends, Don Shell, was, was dressed, they dressed him as Jason. So, you know, it's a lot of fun to play in these universes. I mean, I'm, I started off as a horror lover because of my man, Stephen King. Right. He's 
Yes. Ah, uh, my daddy would make me read the book first. Right. And the first one that I, before I could see the movie, I had to read the book and I uh, explained to him, you know, kind of what was going on. So my first one was Cujo. Oh. And Cujo, I love animals. Obviously, I love my dogs. Uh, so that book was written from the mindset of the dog, not like a horror movie, not like that. You felt sorry for the dog as the rabies started taking over and, and, him, you know, with his boy, he just, in the dog's mind, tell you, it's my boy, why am I growling at him? Why, you know, and, and just the deterioration of the virus uh, after the rabbit bit him. It was one of the most amazing books I'd ever read. And then I watched the movie and I was like, oh, poor dog, poor puppy, you know? So. I was that weird kid that um, back in the day when that movie Beethoven came out. I went, oh yeah. I went to a friend's birthday party and they went to go see that at the theater. So I had to go see it. Their, their dad was like, so what'd you guys think of the movie? I was like, Cujo was better. <laughs> <laughs> I was that weird kid that, you know. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. So um, I guess. Yeah, Beethoven was cute, but yeah, Cujo was a better movie. <laughs> right. I agree. Um, so, you know, it, it's funny. Uh, yeah, and, and my boy C.J. Graham played Jason's father in the movie you're talking about. Uh, which, Vengeance, yes. Mm -hmm. Which was really cool. And Joe Castro did the effects on Vengeance. So that's super cool. And Yeah, all our friends. It's so awesome. My boy Mick Strong worked on it as well. Um, so it's a small world, man. He, it is a small world, especially he, when you're in the movie business. Right. He did Independent the, film, yeah. Yeah, we all know each other. Exactly. Like he did the movie Blade uh, when that came out back in 98. Nice. The special effects for that. Um, oh, that's awesome. And I thought, fuck, for a comic book movie, this is graphic, dude. Like there's a lot of blood in this. That is so sick. I love it. I never would have thought in a million years at that time that a bunch of years later, I'd be friends with the guy that did it. So. Oh my goodness. You've got to have Joe Lujan on, um, on your show. Uh, he just won number one universe at shock fest for the ravage rain universe his comic book universe also uh, obscura is in this universe and it is an absolutely amazing universe i've uh, i did the uh, red carpet for him for immortal wars resurgence oh, nice. and um in in beverly hills he is doing amazing and to be voted number one un universe at shock fest is Bravo, Joe Lujan. Everybody go check out Joe Lujan in the Ravage Rain universe and get involved in a new one. Um, unfortunately, Stan is gone. And, uh, you know, uh, we do have a lot of uh, wonderful things that we can thank Stan for. But now there are some new universes developing. Create, you guys. But uh, that's a big shout out to Joe Lujan for Ravage Rain universe. Hell yeah, send him my way, man. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely, Keith. I'm gonna send him uh, your way, and um, also Jerry G. Angelo, who's the writer and director of um, Obscura and American Warfighter. Beautiful. I am open to like any talent that uh, deserves recognition because there's so much of it out there that uh, there's so much stuff that just gets buried um, because of the content that's out there. Mm -hmm. and, it's not that they're not great. It's just there's so much. And of course, yeah, it becomes who has the money to advertise the most. And that's bullshit because. Well, well yeah, I, I've got little secrets. I, I get them in other places. I've been doing this uh, on Facebook, um, in the uh, Facebook systems and, the, and whatnot um, since 2011. So I used to work for Hewitt Packard. So I'm a little bit of a nerd. Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm um I'm so into art like I draw like a motherfucker all the time that I like when I can when I get the time uh, I do a lot of like old... I heard your art is absolutely amazing oh thanks uh, I don't know I keep hearing that from people I'm like that's crazy uh, that's so oh, I got an opportunity for you they've got a new uh, comedy show it's called Danny McDermott show we've done our second episode it's getting a lot of press he's a New York comedian and he's doing really well and um, actually, one of the South Park artists was watching our show. The one of the South Park, uh, yeah, <laughs> was watching our show on Wednesday. And this was after we all watched Ron's show, Ron and Jimmy's show with Mo with Mona. 
Marshall, the uh, one of the voices from the South Park. So we are looking for somebody to help us with in an original comic within our show. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it's, shit's been so busy. I like I haven't done art in a while, like not like forever, but mm -hmm. it's been months at least um, because things have been so damn hectic. But when I do get the chance, like I'll usually I'll get this like weird retro mood where I'll do some like 80s horror shit. <laughs> nice. I'm such a Freddy freak. Um, there's a page on Facebook that you can find that uh, has a lot of my work. And I use Copic markers, which are alcohol based markers that are blend okay. They're blendable. So they look just like a comic book when you use them properly. Oh, nice. So you could get like three or four shades of a color or more and make a gradient. So it'll be like a shading, like a shadow to light seamlessly. So, oh, wow. That sounds so awesome. Oh, uh, they're eight bucks a marker out here. Um, but they're so worth it. Oh, I, yeah. I went into a store one day and I grabbed a handful and spent 315 bucks on them just because I can. And I'm like, I love these fucking things. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's great. I, I love the shit. So uh, because it was pitched to me about being uh, a horror movie killer, I started saying when I get a minute to do art, like I'm going to design a creepy fucking mask. Like I'm going to like go gung ho on this and design something that, so I'm asking people what elements of a horror mask freak you the fuck out yeah, and trying to get bits and pieces of things that would uh, really, mm. you know, I don't want it to be too damn busy. But yeah, not too busy. I but I mean, it, and it's not a mask, but I guess it is a mask, but uh, Freddy Krueger, his uh, burnt up, disgusting face. Right. And that, and, and he's, a, he's the one that really freaked me out. And I had to figure out how to, you know, face my fears, Stephen King style, because Freddy, that little fucker can get you while you're sleeping. Fuck that shit. <laughs> that is not my idea of fucking fun. I go to sleep to disconnect from the world and enjoy myself not be chased by a motherfucker that can only get me when I'm sleeping. Oh, that is a nightmare to me in itself. If you can't go to sleep because you're going to get fucking tormented by fucking Freddy. Shit. I'm glad that shit's fake. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> that, if that, if that came out, that shit was real Keith, I'd be fucking done. You know, I can't even do it. I can't even sleep and be safe. I'm, I'm done. And I'm one of those stupid motherfuckers that, uh, you know, the second you tell me not to do something, you're going to, you're going to do it. And that I had to fight that fucker in my dreams as it is. And I learned how, you know, like dream warrior style, but I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. You are not going to kill me. Period. I'm still alive. So I, I must have made it. Johnny Depp's character in the first one is told no matter what. <laughs> Oh my God, and he did, he fell asleep. I, oh, that kill was the best kill and the most blood. I love that kill. Right, but I'm that I'm that idiot that's sitting there like, I would have done it in half the time. The second she told me not to fall asleep, I'd be taking fucking, uh, you know. Sleeping I, pills. I would be grabbing a fistful of melatonin and just be like, <laughs> I'll what to do. Let me meet this motherfucker. I'll show him. Nobody tells me what to do. Now just out of spite. Right? You can't tell me I can't sleep. Fuck you, Freddy. <laughs> I love it, Keith. I love it. Oh my God. It's such a, like today, it's really cool because I've got you on the show. Uh -huh. Then I have Jan Birch from people. Oh my God, he's awesome. And then after that, Mickey Farish is coming on. Holy cow, you got a lineup. Right. You're killing it. Just a couple days ago, I had Dig Farish, which I love. Like, super cool guy. <laughs> you are killing it. Maybe you could do me a favor. I need a little bit of help. My film Obscura, we have a seed and spark going right now. And we are only about uh, $1,600 away from our goal. Um, we've got pre-sales up of the uh, the DVD uh, autographed and a poster from the director. We also have um, Eileen Dietz is also in that. 
So that's going to be absolutely awesome. Robert Lasardo is in it, uh, Tyler Gallant, Gary Giangelo, and um, you've got directing Joe Lujan and Jerry Giangelo and um, Grant James. So we've got three directors. It's absolutely amazing. It is a, um, it's a creature feature. Joe Castro is um, one of the special effects uh, folks in um, Los Angeles. And um, we've got Roxy Trano who did an amazing job in our, on our Goldfield shoot. So if you go to Seed, Seed and Spark, uh, there's just a really fun perks up there. Um, one for the, you know, the pre-sale of the, of the DVD and there's only 27 left. So they're not gonna, we're not gonna do that again. It's not, you know, that's it, there's 27 left. And then um, for uh, another perk, we've got the Ravage Rain Universe perk, which is gonna give you, um, I think he said, <laughs> I think he said five comic books and two movies from the Ravage Rain Universe from Joe Lujan. So definitely go to Seed and Spark um, Obscura. You can also go to rocketpig.com um, or you can go whatisobscura.com and that'll take you to find everything you need. We've been shooting out in a gold field and now we've got a little bit of a break and they're gonna be wrapping the rest of it up in LA. Do you, you know what? Um, send me the links on social media and I'll add them in the description of the video. So that oh, perfect. I have it written. Perfect, because that one, I think we got nine days left. We need to get that one done. Yeah, and I'll definitely send you the link to Seed and Spark for what is Obscura. Because you know people don't like to actually try to remember shit and type it. No, they don't. And that's one thing that's nice because you're recording yours. Uh, if we were doing it live, I have a, a huge crew in a huge chat room. Like, uh, like you know, Jimmy's folks, we, we all stick together and we go to all you guys' shows and, you know, show support in the chat room. So since you get to edit yours, it's going to make it a little bit more fun. You know, I, I am um, heading in that direction eventually of doing the for the live. Things, yeah, um, possibly. But I like that you're using the Zoom because I, you know, I could set up my nice, you know, backgrounds and stuff. It, um, so like I'm playing with the idea. It has its benefits, but so does this. Mm -hmm. uh, my first live show, though, for my stream, my Twitch channel will be my first video for that. I've got Derek from Suck It Podcast coming on because him and I just mesh immediately and, you know. Yeah, I, I got to go on Suck It. <laughs> dude, he's so good. Yes, uh, he is. He's mad at me, though. Why? What'd you do? Because I was on his show and he's like, listen, motherfucker, I'm starting to get pissed off at you because normally when I have people on my show that are funnier than me, they're stand-up comedians. This is bullshit. Oh no! He's like, now I got to come on your show and upstage you. I'm like, oh. ooh, it sounds like a challenge. I think you guys both need to go on the Danny McDermott show because he's the. <laughs> it'll just be a, a, a group of laughter. <laughs> but what what Derek doesn't know is when he comes on my show on October 31st, it's going to be the first live show. He agreed to that. Okay. But what he doesn't know is I have a shirt that I'm waiting for just that show. That says, I shaved my balls for this. <laughs> so that's great. Out. I love it. I love it. And oh my gosh, just make sure you keep me up to date because I'll make sure to be sharing that live show so that we can, uh, before, you know, the planning on going live, I'll share it. Make sure everybody's watching. He doesn't know anything about the shirt. So like the second he comes on the air, he's going to see it. And just like, for fuck's sake. Well, if he's going to watch this show, you might want to cut it off. He doesn't watch my shit. <laughs> he's so busy with his own <laughs> right that's funny that's funny he likes to pretend he watches my shit but i know he doesn't <laughs> <laughs> there's no way i was gonna pretend i had to at least watch my friends <laughs> this, this will confirm he doesn't um but yeah i you know there's the benefit to doing like the uh pre-recorded is that i can add the links and stuff like I just did it for uh Jonas Wolscher who uh had a bunch of links for what he's doing with his new film so I'm like hell yeah I'll put it in the description so people can click on that and kind of support what you're doing um mm -hmm. anytime anybody has links they want me to add I'm glad to do it uh he was just the first to ask so then I thought to offer because now I'm like that makes sense you know yeah it totally makes sense and uh, definitely with the um the number of days that we have left you know we're already green lit with seed and spark and that's a wonderful thing so we're just uh you know um we did 90 percent of the sh of the filming is already complete 
Um, it's just those finishing funds and putting a little bit money back in people's pockets because it's been a lot of out of pocket expense at this point, but we're, we're, we've got an incredible team. It just, it's just awesome. I cannot wait for you guys to see it. I love if you go to the Facebook page, you're going to see a lot of behind the scenes videos and it's a lot of action stuff. And I'll put that link in there for you too. Beautiful. I, I can't wait till, uh, like I've had so many people, it's crazy that were like, the second they heard um, me being asked if I'd be interested in playing a horror killer because of the size of me. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, shit, yeah. They were like, you would be fucking out of your mind not to, you know? And I was like, dude, I'm committed. Like, I'm gonna do it. it oh yeah. I can, uh, like, just for the you know, the script is just gonna fall in your lap because you've already started manifesting it. Right. And That's what like, you're doing, Keith. You've already started manifesting it. Right. And it's like, for me, it's like, I don't give a fuck if it's just for the experience to say I did it. That'd be cool. Yeah, but you're gonna be hooked. You're gonna be hooked. Right. I mean, look at all the movies I'm working on. I'm hooked. There's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> and yeah. I, I'm mostly a producer, but, you know, Joseph Kelly put me in Clown Motel. Um, and my role continued. I survived. I'm a final girl. There's two of us. There's, I'm a final girl in Clown Motel. And so Clown Motel 2, I go pretty deep. It goes pretty deep. It's and now you got to see if I survive again. I don't know. That choice of words is hilarious because Ron came on my show and described it as rivaling porn with how much nudity is in it. So uh, going deep. Oh, cl Clown Motel? Yeah. Oh, he's so still. He's so silly. There's no nudity in it. Really? <laughs> At least there wasn't in the first one. He likes to play. I no, actually, it's very, very respectful. Very, very respectful. <laughs> and that might have been Clown NATO or Clown Fear he was talking about. Uh, he, he's funny. It's on my show. I mean, uh, yeah, I'll have to, I think it was, it might've been one of the other clown movies because Ron's in a few of them. But he was talking about what's upcoming that he's working on and said there's more tits in it than a porn. So, uh, oh, he might also be just trying to get some good publicity out there, but I just say, <laughs> it, it is Ron. I mean, we are, uh, we are a lot of, a, a lot of us are female, female filmmakers. And, um, there's a lot of respect that, uh, that, you know, we do get, Sometimes showing tits is not the way to do it. Maybe it's just Ron's tits. Oh, no. <laughs> it might be Hammy. I don't know if you've seen Clown with the one. <laughs> Hammy shows his tits. So it might be Hammy again. I don't know. Ron has jokes. You just might have to watch and find out. Right? Fucking Ron. <laughs> Every time. Yeah, like, oh, fucking Ron. He is just, he's, he's a titty man. <laughs> He fucking is. <laughs> oh my God. And this was classic. I really, it, it's funny because I'm glad nobody had a camera on it, but when we were at um, the, uh, it was the info list. We were at an info list, uh, wisdom, some kind of party. No, it was at, it was at um, Nation's Fire. And Ron came behind me and literally lifted him up, literally, and shook him in front of a lot of people saw just nobody had a camera and i'm like oh my god if you weren't gay i'd have knocked you the fuck out the funniest part of that is i'm not even the least bit surprised <laughs> you, you shouldn't be <laughs> he's hilarious he is relentless oh my god that dude kills me all about the boobs when i when i was on their show the First thing when I jumped in the green room that I heard was, besides, give your wang a break. <laughs> and I, just, I, I was sitting there dying in the green room. Oh my God. Telling their, was... their uh, viewer that, you know, they were always picking on for, you know, freaking out over the, the women he has on the show. Uh, yep. Today, not the day, we have a dude coming on. Sorry, buddy. But besides, give your wang a rest and just. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first he loves thing. it. It is so funny. <laughs> he it's loves the it. First thing yeah. I heard when I came in the green room and I was like, it's going to be one of those days, man. <laughs> you can't help but have fun. <laughs> not for the faint at heart. And uh, definitely not for people that can't take a boob joke or two. Right. You know, 
Yeah. I don't, there's, you know, and, and, you know, with all of the things that go on nowadays, it's like, oh God, please, you know, <laughs> just please stop. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, you gotta I, laugh. You gotta laugh and you can't be all super butt hurt over some dumb shit. I, you know, it's, it's so true. And I forgot to tell him this story because he would have died. Um, because I think sometimes he throws people off with the choice of words he uses. For a guy mm -hmm. that's gay, he uses some words that you would think he would find terribly offensive. Um, so that makes me laugh every time because it just shows like he doesn't give a shit. Exactly. And uh, a friend of mine, a neighbor, happens to be gay. And he's the same way. He's got the. It's beautiful. It's very colorful. It's beautiful. <laughs> greatest sense of humor. And he's a smart ass. So he said something smart ass to this old woman neighbor. And she says, I'm going to hit you. And he says, Please don't. Nobody wants bruised fruit. <laughs> and I laughed. <laughs> That's I, so I, awesome. I love it. I love that one, how I got out of spankings was. Uh, I grabbed my ankles and held on and told my mom to do it harder. It felt good. That was the last thank you I ever got. I laughed so damn hard. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny as hell. And to have funny <laughs> humor. I love it. Um, it's so good. And yes, it is. It is. You got to be able to laugh and to be able to make your mother laugh when She's really mad and she was whipping me with a Dr. Scholl's shoe. So, <laughs> a Dr. Scholl's. <laughs> you remember those wooden? Yeah. Too many spoons had broken. Um, she couldn't get get the belt aimed right, so we didn't use a belt. <laughs> Did she <laughs> give you with that shoe? I said, oh God, I had to hold it. Like, oh, it didn't hurt, but it did. It hurt like a motherfucker. God, it hurt. But I just turned around with the nicest little smile. Oh, mom. Do it again. Uh, I like that. She lost it. She started laughing. She dropped the shoe. She had to walk, walk, walk away. What would you do if a kid? I feel bad for what I'm going to do. I, I, I don't want to capitalize on your trauma. But if Dr. Scholz is listening, I expect a fucking sponsorship immediately. Oh yeah, Dr. Souls. Come on, man. You guys shouldn't have made those shoes. Those hurt. Right. So they hurt. I, I hid them from her for over a year. So a part of the funds that I make off Dr. Scholl's sponsorship will go to you for reparations for your ass. Uh yes. <laughs> I'm gonna start a hashtag heal them cheeks. <laughs> Fantastic. That's classic. I absolutely love it. I'm going to have to make my mother listen to the show. It's Angela. I'm going to tag Dr. Schultz because I want. Oh, God, yes, please. I want compensation <laughs> for you. I am now your new lawyer. Um. <laughs> yeah, that did some trauma. It really did. For me to say that to my mother, you know, it did some. <laughs> I was like, how can I make her stop? She See something might, that just totally she might, cracks her up. She might have some trauma in this too. Maybe I can get an extra piece of the. Box. Yeah, you could probably get something extra, especially like the year that they went missing because I hit them. I might get her some kickback too from Shoals. They might. Feel no, you <laughs> you sure might. <laughs> That's so awesome. Yep. See, I'm I'm a good kid. I still I grew up great, even though I got traumatized. We, we'll, tell Dr. The, we'll tell the courts if we have to take it there for Dr. Scholz to pay up. There's a crack in your ass from all that abuse now. <laughs> we have evidence. It never healed. <laughs> God, this is the most I've laughed all week. <laughs> well, shit, I'm glad I could help. Before this gets Thank you worse, so much, Keith. Before this gets more depraved, I have another guest in three minutes. So, all right, well, let's wrap it up. Thank you so much for having me on the show, and um, my wonderful publicist uh, Jimmy Starr. Thank you, and Eileen Shapiro for uh, hooking it up, and um, make sure I drop those links for you. <laughs> thank you for your time. 
<laughs> You're welcome. Have a great next show. Bye. Hey, thanks for your story of torment, too. That uh, <laughs> Dr. Schultz for life. If they pay. If not, yeah. <laughs> we haven't decided how we're going with this yet. I'll we'll see. I'll leave it that. I'll leave that to you, my new attorney. Right. I'll, I'll let you know if I get sponsorship or not. <laughs> on the next Perfect. Show, I might. Perfect. I might just endorse them on the next show just for funsies and see how. That oh, goes. that'll be great. That'll be awesome. <laughs> I love it. I love it, Keith. Great show. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye. Have a good one. You too. <laughs> That was my friend, Angela Joseph. Awesome, awesome person. Uh, had such a blast talking to her, man. We had a lot of laughs. It was a pretty funny conversation. Very chill. Uh, I loved her excitement when she found out the show's uncensored so she could say whatever she wants. <laughs> a woman after my own heart, man. Anyways, I hope you're digging all these Halloween shows. Uh, they've been a blast to do. There's plenty more to come. So uh, this Friday, uh, Mick Strong returns and he's bringing a guest with him so you gotta check that out and uh we got a lot going on this friday i also have cj graham on so it's gonna be a blast man check it out and until then i'll catch your asses later man